If you like to laugh, and who doesn't, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to My Funny House with the Powell Brothers. Frank Powell is a real estate broker who was born and raised in San Diego, along with Frank's brother Mark, a real estate broker who also lives in San Diego. Each week, the Powell Brothers bring in a special guest comedian to share hilarious real estate stories so you can learn what can go really right and what can go really wrong with home improvements and home ownership. So now, let's get into it with My Funny House. Here are your hosts, Frank and Mark Powell on The Answer San Diego. Good morning, San Diego. Happy Saturday. My name is Mark Powell. Thank you, thank you. I'd like to introduce my brother right now who is not sitting next to me. He happens to be in the happiest place in the world. Las Vegas? No. Uh. <laughs> That's the second happiest place. Okay. But this is a happy place. Frank, go, where are you? Uh, oh, my God. It's crazy here in Disneyland. Ooh. I just handed uh, Mickey Mouse my business card. He's looking for a new uh, clubhouse. <laughs> um, I'm still working. All right, that's good. Hey, Frank. You're going to hear a whole bunch of stuff behind, but I'll mute it, and I'm going to introduce the lovely Maria Herman. Welcome Hello, back. good morning. Good morning. Yay, Maria's Thank here. You. Good to see you, Maria. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to continue the domino effect here and introduce the one and only Tony Calabrese, man Ooh. about town and meeting extraordinary. That's Mom. Mom. <laughs> Rado. I don't have anybody to introduce. I feel <laughs> left okay. out. But that's good because we've had a lot of introductions. So let's do one more. Let's introduce our show topic today. Yes. The eviction process, which is not the happiest kind of no. place to no. be when you're in eviction. However, it is something that happens all the time. And recently, there was a moratorium placed on evictions but that moratorium expired. It was due to COVID. If you had a COVID hardship, you lost your job, you couldn't go to work, whatever reason, because we were in a global pandemic, evictions were put on hold. Right Now evictions are moving forward. However, you have to meet certain criteria to have an eviction or to evict somebody. Um, first of all, there are two different types of evictions. You can be evicted from a rental property, mm -hmm. And you can be evicted from your own house. The way you get evicted from your own house is by not paying your mortgage. Or being married. <laughs> that's, that's Just true. saying. You know what's funny? Or, about or, or you could be a teenager. I mean, you that's know, true. Um, that's, uh, that's the joy of parenthood right there. Well, the one way you do get evicted from your own house is if you fail to pay mortgage, what will happen is the bank will foreclose on your property. The first thing you receive is a notice of default, an NOD. And once you receive that, it's going to say you are 90 days behind. That's right. You don't want to nod off on that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. NOD, you don't want to. Frank, are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm right here. Okay. Tell us the reason, the main reason why a person would be evicted, not from their house, but from a rental property. Well, the same reason would be also non-payment. That's the, the, the number one default. Yes, right. If you fail to pay your rent and the landlord is counting on the rent to pay for the mortgage that the house you're staying in and starts going negative, you're going to get evicted. That's correct. So, so the number one reason most people get evicted or asked to leave is because of failure of, of paying the rent. But there's other reasons why you can evict a person. And one is a breach of the lease agreement. Right. So uh, here's some examples of a breach of a lease agreement. Let's say you lease a property and you say that you're going to rent it to yourself and, uh, and your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whoever it is. And then all of a sudden you just start piling in people and piling in people. Now you have eight or nine or 10 people living in your house or you start using your house to run a business out of. Well, what people are doing mm -hmm. with the way rentals are going, mm -hmm. people rent a place and then they rent it out to someone else for more I, money than I, they're paying. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and that's it's a great that's, scam. That's it. That's, that's, but, that's but, but what's the problem with that? How are comedians going to survive otherwise? Really? <laughs> what you, you think comedians live paid? in a, Maria, comedian, you know, comedians don't live in a, we live in our cars. We don't live in that's apartments. Right. Come on. <laughs> you know that. Yes. Eight at a time. Yeah, exactly. In a five-seater. There you go. I don't know. 
I, I've he- I've heard that before. What do you call a comedian without a girlfriend? Homeless. Homeless. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So so breaking the lease is is one of the reasons you can be evicted. An- another reason is if the seller wants to remove the property from the rental market. Right. And that just means the seller wants to sell the house. So if you're in the house and the seller says, hey, look, I want to sell the house, they have to give you some notification. They have to give you two notifications. One is, I'm going to sell the house. And the other one is, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to put a I'm going to put a sign on the property, or I need right to access the property. So your first notification is to sell the house. The other one is right to access the property, and this is where it gets kind of touchy because if you're renting a house, you really don't want people coming in your house every two or three days, you know, walking around. So typically, what realtors do is they'll set up certain days for showings. Right. So you're going to want like that. we're going to sell it on Saturdays between eleven and four, or Sundays between. 12 and, and five and take the pressure off. But you wouldn't believe what renters do because they don't want the house to be sold. Right. They, I'll bet. Wait, can you get, can what you, do they, what do they do? Well, they get to buy things like alligators and stuff like that. They, <laughs> you know, they put them in the living like room. Like a llama? The like llama, a llama. Llama's a big one. You know, yeah, I've seen llamas. That's what I thought. Yeah. Cause it dumps a big one. It does. You know. Yeah. Frank. That's a llama. That'll you want to share some, yes. want to share some stories? We can share this story. Remember, uh, another reason why you get evicted is for the health and safety of the neighborhood or yourself, which means you're cooking crack in your house, which is not a good thing to start doing. But San Diego at one point, unfortunately, was one of the top producers of this, and there was a lot of houses that you would have to put a hazmat suit on even to go into. Remember that? It's, oh, yeah. st- it's yeah. still the number one. It's the meth capital of the world. Well, so if you're cooking crystal methamphetamine, like... Um, the show Breaking Bad. Remember when they yes, went, they went into that? They went into the homes that were tent and they were cooking. The chemicals are so toxic that there's a special disclosure that realtors have that say, you know, was if the house was used for making meth? Oh, really? No, it's, it's, yeah, it's a it's a meth disclosure. You have to tell the people that it was a a, a crack house. And if they find any leftover, they're supposed to give it to the realtor. How's it, <laughs> no, how does that work? No, we don't take that stuff. Oh, no, okay. no, no, no. We don't. We don't want any of that stuff. But that's a, that's a, a reason. If they're doing something like selling drugs out of the house, they're a public nuisance. Also, if they're hoarders, where the oh, house. I had that happen. Ugh. What happened? I, I had a guy live in one of my apartments, and I got a call from the cops saying, "We're at your apartment building." Yeah. Um, and someone has broken and destroyed the pl- place. And then the other cut, can you hear the other half cut? No, no, no. This is a hoarder. And when I got there, I had no idea. And I'm not kidding. When I say you walked in the front door and it was stacked to the, er, there were little corridors through this two bedroom apartment. Unbelievable. That we had. It was insane. I've never seen anything like it in my life. It took, we had to hire a company to come out. They had to rip out the carpet. They had a TSP, everything, bleach everything. We wow. ripped all the hardwood floors out. It was awful. But do you have to evict the person? Oh, God, yeah. You know what I hate? I hate when a renter is, um, they're like a hoarder, but they also uh, have like the wrong kind of animals. So there's not just one llama. <laughs> there's like 50 llamas. They're squeezed into one little room. Then they're not doing crack. They're doing illegal cardigans. That's what they, it's just a menace to society. That's well, what they do saying. bring is rats. So well, that's... look. Here's something else that you have to that renters should be aware of. Also, if if a if a person is going to evict you, it's it sounds so bad, but a, a landlord might just say to the renter, "Hey, look, I got to sell the house. I'm taking it off the rental market, but I have to go through this process." So they have to give them a 60 day notice. Right. And and in that within that 60 day notice, prior to them leaving, they also have to give them time to remedy any repairs that may need to be done. So if, let's say they had a dog that ate up all the sprinklers in the backyard. Now dogs like to chew on the sprinkler heads. It, they, would get, they would be allowed to repair that. If not, the landlord can take money off of their deposit for these repairs. And this is where it gets kind of sticky because some- well, Also the landlord can also help them financially, Mark, over that too, because they're not only taking money. A lot of times these people, uh, certain people need help moving to another place and they don't have the down payment. And they used to call that cash for keys, but there's another term that you should call that very important. Okay, so what it's called, what, what Frank is talking about back uh, maybe a, a couple decades ago was called cash for keys. 
I give you cash, you give me the keys. And during the foreclosure era, when, when they were really bad in 2007, 2008, oh, yeah. um, people were literally so upset they were destroying homes. Yeah, like, filling toilets with concrete and doing all sorts of crazy yes. stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, no, but but really filling toilets with concrete. No, not, I'm not kidding. Well, because yeah. Hey, would you? Hey. Because <laughs> I was thinking, Forget you know, about maybe it. was a maybe was a bad meal or something. Oh, you know? So uh, so they do. They would pour concrete into the toilets and flush them. They would take little golf balls or tennis balls mm -hmm. and drop them in the air vents. So you can't even flush the toilets because there's no air moving. It's like trying to pour milk without the, the air. It just yeah. it won't work. So in order to alleviate that, some the banks would say, hey, offer them some money, just anti-destroying money. If we give you some money, cash for keys, will you please vacate the property in a, and leave it in broom-swept condition? Yeah, it's called extortion, it's called. <laughs> but it yeah. works. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. That sounds like a pretty good idea. I mean, yeah. if they really thought that the the property could, yeah, I can't help but think that if you're going to destroy a property, there might be a law against that, isn't that? If it's not it's, your property, well, it's absolutely. It's called vandalism, you know, and you you really shouldn't destroy property that's not yours. But but for a lot of these people, so, so the banks were going to pay the people not to vandalize. They I did. Pay, like they did. They did. They I, paid I them a like, lot. I'd like to get paid a lot. I never vandalize. I feel like I'm owed something right now. <laughs> I, mean, I never. Where's the money? Yeah. That's what I want to know. I'd be good all this time. Exactly. Where is it? What one of the main things that you have to do if you're going to evict somebody is you have to give them proper notice, and that's typically done by serving them with a notice. To vacate. Yeah, we do that in my family really well. <laughs> Yo, get out. <laughs> and you, Tony, yeah, Tony gives them one minute to get out. Yeah, get out. It's very well, simple. You, you, you know, you, you, you can take the notice, or I have this violin case. <laughs> it was. It's. It's sometimes. You know, it's sad when when a person has been living in a place for a very long time, and then they're asked to vacate because it's really their home. So I know it is rough. So it's it's tough on them, but but the. The problem is, is that if you don't own the place and you're renting it, and the the landlord has to either do some tenant improvements, that's another reason. Oh yeah, we talked about. That. Okay. I know when I renovated my my when I renovated my units, yeah, I actually put tenants up in hotels while they were being they're so nice. I mean, and I you know, and then they gave, I gave them the option of coming back, and all of them came oh. back, but. Um, I guess that was the only way I could move them was to say right. I'm doing renovations. Right. right. If you if and even if you're going to let's say that you own a rental property and you have some termites out there and they're going to tent the house, you can't just tell them to to leave and come back in 3 or 4 days. You have to provide right. them with a place to stay, you know? What about what the We're seeing today in today's world other than like two uh decades ago, today we're seeing all the baby boomers who are the elderly people who uh we're living in a three bedroom, two bath. They downsided. Now they're renting their place. And now it's about time where they need to sell that house in right. order to pay for assisted living Correct. or any other kind of nursing. And that's where we're seeing another big boom in this eviction. The problem is there's no rentals. Just like there's right. no uh, in inventory in buying a house, it's very hard for a person even to cooperate because they go, hey, if you sign me a rental, I'll be happy to move out, but there's no rentals that's, in San that's Diego. That's true. Well, aren't people also a lot of places being converted like to Airbnbs too? And so they, that's, they're being converted to Airbnb so they can maximize the income especially from the, the beach property. area here. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it, you know so what? What happens if a person doesn't want to move out? <laughs> okay, like, that's a, again. Maria, you call me. Perfect. <laughs> call Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. You can't. No, you can't. They, people used to do they that. They frown on you that. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. At least not in California. Yeah, so right. what happens if they refuse to move out? They're served with an ev eviction notice after 60 days, then they're, then they're served with a notice, um, an unlawful detainer, which means you can no longer live in this house. And if you don't move out, we're going to take you to court. And then once they go to court, if they show up at court, oftentimes the judge will rule and say, okay, you can stay for another 15 days. You have to pay your back rent or whatever it is. But if they don't move out within a certain day, it's called a sheriff's lockout. Sheriff, law enforcement. So the sheriffs, actually the sheriffs in their uniforms, show up at the property, the they knock there. on the door. You have 20 minutes to vacate, grab your personal items, 
And while they're moving their personal items out, typically somebody representative from for the seller or the owner of the property is rekeying all of the doors and taking a, a screw gun and screwing the window shut so they're making it almost impossible to get in. But the people's properties are still right. in the house, so they have... It's, that's when it gets ugly. Yeah, that's when it gets bad. So now somebody has to let the people in the house from the time they got locked out to 18 days, two and, two and a half weeks, to pick up their personal property and move. It's called an 18-day personal property eviction notice. And whatever's left... <laughs> yes? Go ahead. But well, whatever, whatever's yeah. left in there, it, it can become the property of the seller and the seller can do what they want with it. It's called abandoned property. So this all starts with the sheriffs showing up in their uniforms, like you said. Um, is, is there ever a time when the sheriffs show up not in their uniform? This is what <laughs> I'd like to. These are pressing questions. Um, no, they always show up in uniform. Okay. And they and they. Um, it's worse when they're on horses, though, because no, it's kind of scary, though. Yeah. You know, it's scary for the people. They're in there yeah, and like, course. but but believe me, they've had a long, long time to know that they have to get out of this of the property. And then they're they're basically that's a real eviction. They're told to leave, get out, you know. Well, what's happening yeah. now because of COVID, uh -huh. the rents haven't been paid for a lot of people for right. my brothers have has property in in Pacific Beach where they just haven't paid the rent for over a year. Yeah, it's terrible. Um and they they have to sue them to get the rent. That's right. the back rent, but they can't evict them for back rent. They can only evict them going forward if Correct. they don't pay the rent. Correct. So how many people are like that in the country? I mean, millions. Yeah. I mean, what are they going to do with all that? Back. <clears throat> it's I mean, this is this is the problem that we're facing. A lot of people are in this situation. That's why we're talking about it. A lot of people are in it, in the situation where they're going to be evicted. They're asked to leave the house. The Powell brothers, and we'll help them out. Yeah. They do. You can call us eight five eight nine two two seven seven two five. Give us a call. You know? Yeah, we help them. We help the people who are getting evicted as much as we help the people who are evicting them because it's a crisis. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Like Tony mentioned, there's a backlog of people who are going to be sued. There is some stimulus coming out depending on what the uh, Senate votes on. They try to help relieve the uh, property owners hmm. and compensate for their loss uh, during COVID. So that's also being spoken about. And uh, But it's going to be a mess. So that's why we're getting people ready. If you have any eviction questions or you, you can't find a place to rent uh, and you uh, haven't, uh, maybe qualify, maybe don't even purchase a house, you give us a call and we'll help you out. Yeah, we can, all, we can assist with rental property. So if somebody calls up, we have access to the multiple listing service. And in that multiple listing service, realtors who represent sellers, they'll place their, their homes on there and we can refer people to maybe a potential place for them to move into. Mm. But right now there's what, three, only 3% vacancies in San Diego. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's, it's, it's a, you know, we don't, we, we're, this is an, a serious affordable housing um, shortage and a, you know, here all these politicians every year where I'm going to address affordable housing, address it. They what, don't. They what's don't do the anything. opposite. They went up they in price. So if you own a house, you're doing great because your home is appreciated. San Diego homes have appreciated the most in the nation other than Phoenix, which I was just in Scottsdale in Phoenix. It's a nice place there too. It's hot. It's really hot, yeah. So, so, the, so once the person is evicted, here's where the problem lies. If, if they're evicted and these evictions go against their credit. And they will. And it will. Now they go to get another house and the new landlord runs their <clears throat> credit and it comes back bad. Yeah, they're done. How do you, you know, so, so it's, a, it's a bad cycle for them. So be proactive. If you're going to be evicted, contact an eviction attorney to get legal counsel. You can call us if you need help relocating. We, won't, we don't provide legal advice, but what we do provide is relocation advice and can help you relocate. Yeah, but if you're if you can't pay your rent, whether it's a home or an apartment, yeah. contact your landlord immediately. Don't yeah. wait until right. you're getting to to the eviction process. Right. Try and work something out right. before you get to that point. Because once you do, it's ugly. oh yeah yeah. So 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 the people that are involved in the process of evicting the homeowners, if you have a situation where you need assistance with selling a property that have renters in place. We're very well versed in that. We've done this 
for 20 years now. It's it, And so we know how to do it in a way that we're, we work with both the tenants and we work with the owners to come to a resolution to get them out. You know. I do this. And how about what about what about the llamas? Do you work with the llamas? <laughs> oh my God, it's so funny. <laughs> this this is a problem. Also, the alligators. Tony mentioned this at yes. least two in San Diego. They they're going to need some and help. Bengal tigers. You know, relocation to Florida. I think Frank was selling a house with a llama. Frank, don't you have a house for sale with a llama in the backyard? And oh, they're they're uh, called alpacas. Oh, they're, they're kind sorry. Of like llamas only. Uh, I I think they spit more. I don't I don't know. <laughs> they look good. They look good, but you don't want to try to pet them. They spit yeah. more. <laughs> Did he say sit? Spit. As in spit. spit. <laughs> they spit okay, more. Okay, you could have gone either way. Um. Hey, you know, okay. okay. You, know, you know what I've always thought was entertaining? Whenever I go to a comedy club, they always they evict you two out of there. Oh, yes, they know? will. So at the, when the show's over... They say you got to leave, even though you want to stay a bit longer. But so, tell us how that eviction process works, Maria, and tell us where we can find 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 you prior to the eviction. <laughs> if you're not going to laugh, we'd like to evict you right away. Right. Please don't stay. <laughs> <laughs> or if you can't shut up and you're in the audience, yeah. we'll evict you. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, Comedy Heights all the way. Comedy Heights um, on all of the social media. ComedyHeights.com. The calendar of the shows I have coming up. I have a few coming up with you, Tony. That's oh, right. I have we a do. Show. Yeah. Um, well, how do we get a hold of Tony? Somewhere. Right. Uh, uh, somewhere in Little Italy. It's, no. How do we get a hold of Tony? We want to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, TonyCalabrese.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the social media platforms. And Frank, how do we get a hold of you in Disneyland? Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to get evicted soon from Disneyland. I just uh, kicked Goofy in the butt. He's uh, <laughs> chasing me right now. So I got to go, you guys. Okay. Have a great Saturday. And to get a hold of us, remember, just give us a call at 858-922-7725 or hit us up online at PowellBrothersRealty.com or myfunnyhouse.com. Thank you for listening, everybody. We appreciate you a lot. Thanks so much for joining us today for My Funny House with the Powell Brothers right here on The Answer San Diego. Join us next week as the Powell Brothers bring you more funny stories of what can go really right and what can go really wrong with home improvements and home ownership and bring the laughs to you with yet another hilarious guest comedian. To find out more about the Powell Brothers, be sure to check out their website at powellbrothersrealty.com or you can visit myfunnyhouse.com. Again, thanks for being with us and we'll see you next week for My Funny House on The Answer San Diego.